Yo, what is up, YouTube? Lee the Captain here, and I believe that Filecoin's native token called Phil could hypothetically at least go to the price of $100 during the next bull run, and during the process, make all of those Filecoin critics come running over to their girlfriend's boyfriend's grandma who works at the thrift shop and start begging for that used Bratwurst Extender Taylor Swift Edition, if you know you know. However, that's neither Bratwurst Extender nor financial advice, but in today's video, I want to explain several reasons why I believe that could very well happen. And a major reason why I think that could happen, I think it's going to boil down to the amazing rock solid, that's what she said, fundamentals of Filecoin. You know, Filecoin is a peer-to-peer -peer network that stores files with built-in economic incentives and cryptography to ensure that files are stored reliably over time. You want to be reliable, much like Filecoin, especially when it comes to matters in the boom boom in the bedroom, if you know what I mean. But yeah, besides that point, we're getting a little bit off track here. Filecoin, very amazingly, is built on top of the same software that is powering the IPFS protocol, which by the way is a peer-to-peer -peer distributed storage network that leverages content addressing to allow permanent access to the data and avoids relying on specific devices or cloud servers for addressing the content. However, I think that it should be noted how Filecoin is actually different from the IPFS protocol because when you think about it, Filecoin has an incentive layer on top. Again, making it different from the IPFS protocol. And the reason why this is even done in the first place is to incentivize contents to be reliably stored and accessed, which I think is fantastic. However, it doesn't end there because if we take a look at this, Filecoin enables several use cases such as Web3 native NFT and metaverse slash game asset storage, and even to incentivizing permanent storage and as well as to archiving Web2 datasets as a cheaper alternative to cloud storage. So with that being said, I do believe that Filecoin is fundamentally fantastic. Quite essentially, what Filecoin is trying to do is that it's attempting to revolutionize the data storage market through decentralization, which I think is a genius move because when you think about it nowadays, a lot of data storage, it's happening in a centralized way. It's not decentralized. And I actually think this is a bad thing because centralized data storage is typically controlled by a single entity. There's usually these single points of failure. And as a user storing that data, we usually don't have that much freedom and control over the data. However, through decentralization, all of these issues that I just mentioned before, they're pretty much gone. That's how amazing decentralized data storage is. And I think it's just a matter of time before enterprises truly start catching on to this. But once enterprises slowly but surely start adopting Filecoin, I think it's really going to start this domino effect because once more and more enterprises start understanding the benefits of decentralized data storage solutions, much like Filecoin, once they start adopting it, you know, it just takes a couple to start this domino effect, right? Because enterprises, once they see others doing it, they're going to be more inclined to do it as well. So I think that it's truly just a matter of time before Filecoin achieves amazing long-term success. You know, when a lot of projects out there are focused on the retail market, they can experience amazing short to medium term gains. Let's say the retail market, they can easily latch onto things, right? They follow trends, they follow the hype. You know, for instance, right, you see Pepe popping off, you see Bong popping off, you know, all of these meme coins, and as well as people joining into other hype projects. But really, when you take a look at something like Filecoin, that's focused more so on the enterprise market, you know, it's going to take more time for that to happen. It's not going to happen overnight, you know, in a week, in a month, you know, it's a long process. And I think sometimes people, they don't understand that. They say that, oh, you know, Filecoin's native token called Phil, why is it not exploding like Pepe? Why is that? Yeah, it's because Filecoin, it's more so targeted towards the enterprise market. You know, it's not focused on chasing hype or chasing trends. That's not the case whatsoever. And you got to think about this, right? Filecoin, they're focused on decentralizing data storage right now when there's relatively low competition. You know, many projects out there are not focused on the data storage market, unlike Filecoin. And I think this is a genius move because Filecoin, they are anticipating the wave because a lot of projects out there, they're focused on chasing trends, chasing hype. But in my opinion, that's a bad idea because once enterprises truly start adopting decentralized data storage solutions, you know, once that truly starts kicking off, Filecoin is in a prime position for success. It's much like in real life, right? When you go surfing, for instance, and you're on the board, if you're putting yourself in a prime position, putting yourself in place to catch the wave, then you're going to have a good time. Then you're going to be able to go along with the ride. You're going to be able to surf because you anticipated the wave. You expected it to come, so you put yourself in a position for that wave. 
However, let's say the wave is 50 feet away and it starts popping off and you're like, wow, I got to chase it now. You start swimming. There's no way you can swim faster than the waves in the ocean. That's just not possible. You know, that's some Aquaman stuff. But yeah, besides that point, I think it's better anticipating a market to grow as opposed to chasing the market later on once it finally does grow. And I think that Filecoin, they understand this concept and that's why they're focused on data storage right now. And why wouldn't they be, right? Because when you take a look at it, the data storage market size by 2030 is anticipated to be worth over $777 billion. You know, that's bigger than some countries' GDP. That's insane to even think about. So I think with that being said, I think it's fair to assume that Filecoin, it's focused on the right market. And now when I say this, some people, their main argument for Filecoin is the fact that, hey, there are other competitors out there. While there may not be that many, there are other competitors. For instance, there are competitors like Arweave, Jasmine, Saya, Storage, and many others. You know, again, right, some people out there, they're saying, oh, Filecoin is going against some fierce competition here, even though there isn't that many. How is it going to have long-term success? How is it going to have a place in the data storage market? And my response to that is this. For instance, right, we take a look at the world of cars. There are so many car brands out there. There's Volvo, BMW, Volkswagen, Mercedes, Rivian, Tesla, you name it. There are so many car brands out there. But why are these car brands able to succeed? Why are they able to generate billions of dollars in revenue? Why are they able to have thousands upon thousands of employees? Why is that the case? It's because the car market, it's insanely massive. That's what she said. You know, a car brand, it doesn't need 90% market share, for instance, to be successful. It doesn't need that. You know, that'd be great. But it doesn't need that to be successful. Just a couple percent will do absolute wonders already. You know, you think Volvo has 90% market share? It absolutely doesn't. But why is it able to be successful? Because again, right, the car market, it's so massive. Just having somewhat of a market share is already just fine. And I think that's going to be exactly the same when it comes to decentralized data storage solutions, much like Filecoin. So for instance, right, Saya can prosper, Storage, Arweave, Jasmine. You know, these projects right here, they can prosper. That's fine. And I'm extremely bullish on them too. But I think it doesn't diminish anything from Filecoin because I think Filecoin will have its own place. Like each car brand, it has its own fans, its own unique selling point, its own targeted demographic. I think much like Filecoin. So when I take a look at Filecoin, I think it's not going to disappear off into the abyss. You know, the data storage market size, it's expected to be worth over $777 billion again, right? Over the next seven years. And when a market size is expected to be that large, there's going to be room for everyone to eat. Jasmine is going to be successful. Saya, Storage, Arweave, in my opinion, at least, and as well as Filecoin. They're all going to have their own place. You know, they don't need 90% market share to be successful. And now, when I say Phil hypothetically going to the price of $100, some people out there, they may cringe. They may say, dude, that's so unrealistic. But here's the thing. I don't think so because... Phil, considering its current circulating supply, if it were to go to the price of $100, it would have a market cap of around $48 billion. And now, this may seem like a lot to some people, but you got to take this into consideration, right? This market cap right here is around $40 billion less than Dogecoin's all-time high market cap. And now, of course, it's not fair to compare a meme coin to something like Phil because something like Dogecoin, for instance, it has more fans, the community is stronger, there's more holders, more hype. I get all that. But I think that, if anything, truly showcases how reaching around a $48 billion market cap is not uncharted territory in the world of cryptos. Again, right, we've seen a meme coin in the past exceed this market cap by around $40 billion. So the reason why I use this example is to showcase how a $48 billion market cap, it's not unheard of in the world of cryptos. So when I consider how Filecoin is focused on the data storage market, when I consider how fundamentally amazing it is, and last but not least, when I consider how it doesn't really have that much competition as of right now, when I take all of that into consideration, I don't see why Phil during the next bull run won't hypothetically at least go to the price of $100. At least that's the way I take a look at it. And now, of course, I think that a major catalyst which could very well allow for this to happen is the fact that I do think that the next bull run could be so legendary. And what do I mean by this? Because as of right now, there's more people than ever before in history owning cryptos. When you take a look back in 2021, during that insane bull run, there was actually over 100 million less crypto owners than today. Currently, there's over 420 million people owning cryptos. And you got to think about this. If the 2021 bull run already looked that crazy, just imagine what the next bull run will look like, especially now that we insert, that's what she said, over 100 million new crypto owners. I mean, carayo. 
when there's that many people owning cryptos, I think that during the next bull run, the FOMO, buying pressure, buying volume, and as well as the altcoin season, I think all of that could really dwarf what we saw back in 2021. And when I take that into consideration, and when I consider the A-plus fundamentals of Filecoin, I don't see why Phil, during the next bull run, won't hypothetically at least go to the price of $100. And with that being said, that is why I am dollar cost averaging into Phil. I'm not a day trader. I'm not a swing trader. I don't use leverage. I like to keep it simple. I just accumulate on a consistent basis on a set schedule over an extended period of time. Anytime I earn any sort of income, I set aside some for Phil. It doesn't matter if the price is pumping or dumping. It doesn't matter. I'm taking more of a long-term approach. I'm focused on the next bull run. I could care less about what happens to the price in the next two hours, in the next two days. You know, a lot of people out there, they comment, oh, ever since you made that video on Phil, the price did this in the next two hours. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, who cares about that? I'm not a day trader. Again, right? I don't use leverage. A lot of people that I know that do that, they get absolutely wrecked. And I don't do that. That's why I like to keep it simple. By dollar cost averaging. And by dollar cost averaging, I think that I'm preparing myself for the next bull run in such a fantastic way. And I wouldn't be surprised whatsoever if Filecoin's native token called Phil did hypothetically at least go to the price of $100 during the next bull run and during the process, make all of those Filecoin critics come running over to their girlfriend's boyfriend's grandma and start begging for that used Bratwurst extender Taylor Swift and Selena Gomez edition. If you know, you know. And if you want to check out a very interesting video, make sure to go ahead and click on this thumbnail right here. It's a very fantastic video and I think you all would really love it. It's been Lee the Captain. And I'll catch you all on the next one. I'm on peace. Bye.